Morning, Willa. Yeah, I'm not letting you in here, but you guys can kind of come and go as you please, can't you? Yeah, good morning. All right, good morning, everyone. I wanted to make a video of this year's brooder setup, if only for helping others, but also for, oh, we got one escaped in, but also for helping me remember what to do next year because this brooder setup that I have is much better than what I had last year. So, um, this year we're doing Freedom Rangers, not Cornish Cross. And last year I took my Siskovich chicken tractors and brought them into a building with concrete floor and used them as brooders. Um, and I had to put multiple tarps on the top of them. And I had three heat lamps in each of them, uh, sometimes four, to keep them warm. Uh, and so do the math there that was like a thousand watts in each of those brooders um, And the electrical bill is a little high. I did notice a spike during uh, the month of April uh, and beginning of May for that um, Fast forward to this year, and we have an Ohio brooder that I built and this Ohio brooder is uh, about 50 inches by 30 inches and there are two heat lamps in it. Um, I started with a 175 watt bulb and a 250 watt bulb. Now I'm down to 275 watts. These are, guys are supposed to go out to pasture in two days, but uh, the weather's not gonna, um, not going to help, and so they're probably not going to go out till this weekend, uh, four to five days from now. So what I'll do is I'll take one of those bulbs out in a couple of days and we'll be down to 175 watt bulb. Um, the other thing I did is this brooder is wired in so it's uh, the wires that come from one bulb come up to this side and they come up to that side and they run underneath this middle section here uh, and into here and I just cut the end off an extension cord and it plugs in and goes up to a timer and you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to practice to get them used to, to lower temperatures. So the timer itself, you can see these pieces uh, here at 11, 12, 1, and 2. We're shutting off the brooder lamp for a half hour at a time. And as days go on, we'll uh, pull out more of those clips to get them less and less uh, supplemental light. But the last thing I'd like to say is that uh, well, two things. One, I have a previous video where I talk about using the uh, using peat moss instead of um, wood chips, uh, wood shavings, pine shavings in here. And this whole area, this whole brooder area, which is about uh, about eight feet by eleven feet, used one and a half one and a half um, bags of peat moss, which if you do the math, that's about $12. Um, I probably would have used five to 10 bags of wood shavings for the same area. So wood shavings, I mean this stuff right here. I have it left over from my daughter's uh, egg layers that she brought up this spring, but I don't actually, I didn't actually use it here. So that's pretty cool that that's a big uh, money saver and it works out really well. There's no nasty, wet, soaked up pieces of wood uh, shavings. It's all, um, really, it just kind of is like dirt, um, except super absorbent dirt. You guys will do anything to get in here, won't you? The puppies are fun and amazing. So, uh, that was the second last thing. The last thing I'll say is that these Cornish are nothing like the uh, or, I'm sorry, these Freedom Rangers are nothing like the Cornish. Um, if you can see, in this corner over here, there's a bunch of them that are just scratching and pecking, and they look like adult uh, layer chickens, actually. They don't look anything like broilers. And their size is good. I'm happy with their size. They're obviously not as big as Cornish at this stage. But 
that does present some challenges. One of the big challenges is, is if they're scratching around so much, they absolutely make a mess of their feeders and their waterers. So I, as you can see, I have uh, two by fours here with hardware cloth. You get down there a little bit better. Sorry for the low light. Two by fours with hardware cloth and I have my waters up here and those waters are staying pretty clean. Um, but I had these waters here before and they kicked so much material up into the uh, into where the water is in the trough there that it plugged them up. So I had to go with these larger waters and I had to get them off of the ground. So um, keep your waters up and then also this feeder is stuck between two of those um, and they actually get all the feed out of that. Uh, this feeder here you can see it's completely caked with, ow, yes, they're hungry. It's completely caked with all sorts of uh, bedding material. So these, I probably should have gotten, get out of there. I probably should have raised those up a little bit too. In fact, I think I'll do that this morning. It's pretty easy, you take a piece of two by four and you screw it in on the bottom and that should be enough. Um, so just some differences between the two that uh, are interesting. Obviously, I like that they are foraging a lot because when you get a feeder like this, there isn't much you can do but just get out as much as you can of the dirt. But Cornish, they aren't as uh, likely to do what you're seeing here, which is attack and go for all the feed. Now, this is nice that they're cleaning it up but they're only getting the large pieces. They're not really cleaning up all of the small filings that have the mineral supplement and stuff in them. So uh, it's nice that if you dump it on the ground, they get it, but unless you're soaking your feed um, or keeping their feeders completely uh, free of debris, they're not getting the whole ration and you wanna make sure they get the whole ration. So I'll give you one look underneath here. Hey guys, watch out. So. There's the lamp in the uh, corner. And I should also mention that there's the uh, ceiling in there, which is wood, but um, the wood is about right here. There's an inch and a half of that yellow, or I'm sorry, the pink uh, insulated foam board that's in here. And that keeps it super, oops, stepped on someone's foot. That keeps it super um, insulated and uh, really, really warm in there. So anyway, that's all. That's the brooder setup. If anything, just to help me remember it. And then also to remember puppies who will get all over you and start biting your feet. Ow. All right. Hey, I already fed you. <laughs>